I've uh, been chief scientific officer at Syntego for about two years. And I think Becky, I joined uh, very near the time that you did as well. And it's certainly been fun working together to understand how we could uh, deliver highest quality products to the translational community. What I'd like to do is uh, to open up and set a baseline uh, in terms of the uh, the uh, clinical market opportunities in front of us, really the opportunities we have to bring some of these new medicines towards uh, patient access. And so th these are some data that were, came from the Alliance for Regenerative, Regenerative Medicine 2022 uh, report, and it's highlighting regionally the uh, number of therapeutic sponsors and the investment that's being made in the cell and gene therapy space. I think one of the things that's most interesting to us is the balance that's seen in all regions between academic and uh, industry trials. And it represents that the people we're anxious to assist on this path of really form the full spectrum of stakeholders in this space. So the uh, particularly in the US, the amount of investment in this space is really uh, hinged upon a very uh, bullish uh, perspective from uh, the former FDA commissioner, Scott Lee, Gottlieb is quoted down here, about seeing 10 to 20 uh, new therapeutics approved on a yearly basis in just three to four more years. And so this is the, uh, the data that I was pointing to from the, alarm, from the ARM report, looking at the balance between industry and academic trials, and also uh, the, the dollar commitment coming in uh, and across these regions. And so what it sets up is on the next slide, which is really a problem statement that comes with this uh, tremendous amount of investment. And, and that problem is that we have a manufacturing shortfall. We, it's the industry who are providing the core reagents and the workflows to accommodate these cell and gene therapeutic trials are under a tremendous shortfall. And it's estimated there's a 500% uh, manufacturing shortfall for the cell therapeutic products. And so one of the things that we're very sensitive to is the long lead time it takes to secure GMP grade reagents. And you know we have to work together, I think, to understand how to provide highest quality, but come forward in a quickest development path. And that's really the core of the problem statement. It's how new developers can balance throughput and speed as they're evaluating gene editing approaches and know that they're staying within the guidelines of, uh, for clinical compatibility and GMP manufacturing. So if you don't mind advancing, yeah. So this is a slide to give perspective on the uh, number of CRISPR nuclease clinical studies that are currently in play. And you can see that it's risen steadily in, from first opportunities in the late uh, 2010 decade. And so now about 70% of the new gene editing trials are CRISPR-based. You're seeing a decline in non-CRISPR-based due to some of the early uh, nucleus and other work uh, similar to talons that have and zinc fingers that had preceded CRISPR uh, uh, studies. And very in, it's very good that we're seeing quite good clinical data come back. Certainly the sickle cell disease and beta thal uh, trials that were launched by CRISPR therapeutics of Vertex are showing very durable responses that really hold uh, high promise for this market sector. If we could go to the next slide. And so uh, what we've reached out and we understand working with you all uh, where the pain points are in terms of uh, trying to develop uh, these safe therapies in a very direct uh, way. You know, we get a lot of feedback. You've, you've probably read it as you go across, but it's really uh, the timeline to go through the development process and be able to receive uh, GMP materials. It's uh, uncertain perspectives on the regulatory guidelines, lot released specifically around CRISPR reagents, and then a little bit more broadly, you know, new regulatory guidelines around the edited cell product. And then uh, one thing that we see frequently are people that have uh, launched their translational path with uh, research materials and are uh, concerned about, about how to switch over to uh, the GMP path and do, to do that without uh, time is everything, without loss of time. And so this slide actually might seem simple and, and, uh, I, and it's not uh, trivial. I think what happens is that these logic modes of planning, engaging, and then securing a partnership so that your development line is locked up has different expectations from different stakeholders. And so I th certainly think that people that are coming into this whole process first time through are often taken back with, uh, with uh, 
their uncertainty about best way to, to uh, streamline a development process, process and best way to gain understanding of the regulatory requirements and, and uh, to meet those. And so the next slide gives uh, some solutions to that. Yeah, so it's really uh, the broad solution that we think we can bring to early developers in the gene editing space. And what you're seeing is really a workflow that goes uh, from discovery to clinic. It goes through uh, using uh, CRISPR to uh, do target ID and validation, and then optimize a uh, specific editing function uh, for best and uh, therapeutic level performance. And so we work with people at that early R&D stage along the, the green swim lane you see there around uh, guide design, uh, research, uh, uh, target optimization, and we produce an RNP, which is a ribonuclear protein a complex of guide plus, uh, plus uh, nuclease. And so we take that uh, all along the workflow. We uh, provide an abbreviated GMP-like product that is at lower cost and can be produced more rapidly to aid in early IND development studies, but produced it with the same uh, instrumentation that will flip over to uh, the GMP production side. And so we have good experience with uh, clients, a number of which have had approved, all of our clients have had approved INDs without going on clinical hold around the materials that we brought into the process. And some of our clients now are actually treating patients. So for us, that's a huge reward. That same type of workflow is something we can assist uh, around editing your cell product. And so not only do we make the guide, but we've also optimized uh, robotic and automated platforms to directly engineer cells. And that applies to immortalized cells. It also applies to primary cells that are used therapeutically. And so we're, we've been able to uh, work towards uh, GMP processes for the engineered cell product that assists our clients in their process development work and leads them out towards uh, the uh, independent ability to GMP manufacture their drug product. So uh, that's where I'm going to close and, and let uh, Becky go ahead and take things over. It's certainly uh, an area that I've always enjoyed over the last couple of years. And I'd be happy to follow up with questions uh, as we go forward. So thank you, Becky, very much. Well, thank you, Bob. And it's a pleasure speaking with everybody today. Thank you all for who are joining us. Um, I'm going to take basically the, the foundation that Bob laid out for you and talk about what can Synthego actually provide and support. If we think about the three things that Bob mentioned as um, the survey results we got in terms of what are the pain points we're seeing in this field, if we think about reagent timeliness, regulatory uncertainty, and RUO to GMP switchover, the first thing is that Synthego does have in terms of the, for the guide RNA, we are able to work with you from very early discovery using our research only uh, platform that can support engineering runs, that can support your technical development and move you through this continuum of different grades of guide RNA till we get to the clinical phase in the GMP guide RNA. Each phase provides you with additional support and additional documentation and really additional data around what your uh, therapeutic is possible, uh, it can do in, safe, in terms of safety and uh, effectiveness. In terms of just the overall GMP guide RNA platform that we have at Synthego, since we launched the GMP um, facility as well as the GMP-like facilities, we've created um, and delivered 87 client batches since May of 2020. We've supported over 27 companies in terms of talk studies, IND enabling studies, including into first in human and phase one trials. We've successfully supported over 10, um, well, I would say that's just this year, 10 successful customer audits in order to be able to provide confidence in terms of our ability as your preferred vendor to be able to provide you your guide RNA in a timely manner. And we've also supported from a regulatory perspective, IND documentation, including CMC documentation, as well as pre-IND support to um, multiple clients that are, that are currently in FDA review or have successfully gone through FDA review and are now in clinical trials. Part of this 
investment. Uh, I was brought in, as Bob said, um, around the same time as Bob. We were both brought in to really support not only the Synthago business, but really build this GMP guide RNA business. I was brought in to really support and build the quality systems and quality infrastructure and regulatory infrastructure to support uh, our customers in this field. Part of that resource uh, investment is we're building a next generation GMP production facility. We're very excited about this. It's launching at the end of the year. This provides us with 18,000 square feet um, of lab space as well as office space. It's increasing our capacity from 1x to 20x. Um, and it's a high throughput GMP production facility, completely automated uh, with integrated manufacturing execution systems, uh, electronic controls will be able to support multiple batch processing um, in our multiple suites that we have in our clean rooms. We'll have in internal uh, QC as well as R&D to support new product development with uh, in collaboration with the GMP operations. And this will also take us to a 24 seven production capability. So we'll be able to provide you with the timeliness of the reagents that you need in a fully qualified GMP space. So what really makes Synthago different and why I'm really proud to be a part of this team is not only can we provide you reliably that continuum grade of guide RNA, plus um, the culture of quality and excellence that you need in order to confidently go to the agencies as well as confidently go into your clinical trials to really benefit the patients that you are developing these therapeutics for. But what we really do and what really sets us apart is we really partner with our customers. We make sure that we are with you from beginning, as I said, from research all the way through clinical trials. And we can actually support your regulatory submissions, your interactions with the agencies, as well as provide you data and information that you need in order to be able to further develop and validate your therapeutic products. And of course, uh, Bob is a wonderful example of the unparalleled uh, expertise that we have at Synthago for CRISPR, for RNPs, as well as for engineered cells and the other platforms and new products that we're currently developing. So for our commitment to quality, we uh, have built a culture of quality at Synthago um, within not only the GMP operations, but really throughout the company. We're committed to building, to continuing to build and sustain that culture of quality within Synthago. Um, we do that through multiple ways, but I'd like to highlight the things on this slide is really our, our robust quality management system. Um, it's integrated into, strategically integrated into the operations as well as we'll be integrated into our automated controls within our new facility. So we'll be able to see in real time any quality issues and, and really prevent and correct those in real time. We are ISO 9001 certified. We've been certified since 2021, since uh, right uh, after I joined, um, continuously certified with no major critical observations. Um, we have, uh, we are committed to continuous improvement. Uh, it's actually one of the things that we get complimented a lot from our customers during audits is our commitment to continuous improvement. And it really shows that we are continuously trying to not, again, um, invest those resources into making sure that we can reliably deliver high quality products to our customers every time. And part of this is also we're introducing a GMP college uh, for our internal folks to uh, continually learn and develop their GMP as well as other regulatory uh, knowledge and expertise. And then again, going back to that culture of quality, it comes down to having eternal vigilance for excellence of every part of our operations. We take accountability and ensure that we hold each other and ourselves accountable to make sure that everything we do is of the highest quality with compliance built into every part of our operations. And we take ownership individually as well as collectively for that quality and that culture of quality to ensure that excellence at every turn. So I think we're all familiar with the fact that even just a couple of years ago, the regulatory space for CRISPR was pretty much the wild, wild west. Um, over the last two years, there have been a lot of advances, including uh, the new guidance that came out, a couple of new guidances that came out from FDA this year regarding CAR-T therapy, as well as gene-edited therapy. 
At Synthego, we are very proud of our regulatory team. Um, we have built a regulatory function that really um, supports our customers internally and externally um, to provide strategic, tactical, and operational guidance. We are not only just waiting for the FDA to tell us what to do, but we are working to advance standards and regulations um, to really have a voice uh, to ensure that we are protecting uh, our customers as well as being able to advance the therapies with um, safely, but uh, removing barriers that we feel would actually limit the ability to be in innovative in this space. So part of what we do is uh, within the regulatory team is we do proactive surveillance. So we're continually doing regulatory intelligence. Um, and trying to develop standards internally that we can present to agencies as well as to our customers to really shape what those standards are going to look like for gene edited therapeutics. We also can provide support for comprehensive regulatory submissions. We partner closely with our customers. We can provide you, again, those uh, pre-IND meetings, including Interact. We can support your IND submissions, including authoring uh, certain modules. And we can also, we have the expertise in place to support your clinical development as well. And then, of course, we always want to communicate what the new regulatory news is so that we can all stay on top of what are the new requirements, uh, what are the, the things that we're hearing from our customers and their interactions with the agencies so that we can continually stay on top of the ever-changing re regulatory landscape. So here's just a little bit more detail uh, about the regulatory support, it, it, specifically in terms of uh, the different phases of your drug development. So again, the pre-IND support, we can actually go and participate in your pre-IND meetings with you as uh, the subject matter experts on uh, the guide RNA as well as RNPs, um, as well as providing you data that you may or information you may need in order to submit um, the briefing documents to the FDA. Again, it, F FDA has stated that um, that the guide RNA and uh, the and the CAS reagents are are drug substances per their new uh, draft guidance, and so we can provide you the entire drug substance module for the guide RNA or the RNP uh, as we um, support you in your ability to get these therapeutics to the patients who need them. And then post IND, if there's any questions, uh, requests for information, but also just you need support in your clinical phases as, as you're developing and, and validating your processes, we have the experience in order to be able to support you there as well. And in terms of the standard support that we, we provide for CMC uh, as well as or chemistry manufacturing controls for your drug development, on the left side, those are our standard QC and quality assurance um, uh, tests as well as uh, deliverables that we provide. Um, again, uh, these are very basic, but it's also customizable. Again, um, if you look on the left, on the right side, um, these are the, the more dedicated or personalized support, but all of it is really dedicated and personalized for our customers. So we can mix and match these. We always try to ensure that we are providing the right testing per uh, feedback that we're getting from the agency, as well as ensuring that you have a, a dedicated alliance manager who will work with you um, throughout your entire journey with Synthego. Again, we we really strive to not only from a regulatory and quality perspective support our customers, but really use the uh, expertise that we have to advance as well as standardize this, this crazy world that we're living in with, with CRISPR therapeutics in this, this really innovative space. Um, over the years that Synthego has been uh, has been in business, we have uh, we are the CRISPR experts. We are not just doing this uh, as a CMO. We really do believe in this technology. We've synthesized over a million guides since 2011 with an 80% average editing efficiency. So we know that we can provide you with the reagents that you need um, and the drug substances that you need to have a successful therapeutic. We've been cited in over a thousand public publications um, and it participated or provided uh, reagents to cutting edge research in over 45 countries. As Bob mentioned earlier, we have different um, platforms that can support you at different points within your continuum of drug development. 
Um, again, it depends on your application as well as your risk tolerance, but we will work with you very closely to determine what would be appropriate when you're doing your research and, and just your in initial engineering runs or technical development, what will be appropriate as you're moving into safety pharmacology and PK or non-GLP studies, what will be the best uh, material for you to use in your IND enabling studies, and then of course providing you with the GMP material you need to move into your clinical studies. One thing that I really want to highlight is we have two very uh, different platforms in terms of GMP-like and GMP. Our GMP-like is high quality material. It's higher quality than our RUO. It's, it's manufactured under GLP conditions. And we really can um, mimic what will eventually be your clinical material in your GMP um, facility, uh, sorry, your GMP material for your clinical trials. Um, so we really try to make sure that the GMP-like or your IND enabling material is going to be very close to what you would be using in the clinic, again, in order to ensure that you are successful um, in your IND submissions, but also in your experiments that you're doing in order to ensure that your therapeutic is safe and effective. And as I mentioned, we'll have, uh, we have dedicated alliance managers. These work closely with our customers as well as with the internal team to support you throughout your entire Synthago journey. So starting from just your initial inquiries uh, to working with you to, to define what your key deliverables are, what your milestones are so that we can ensure we can deliver what you need, again, according to your timelines and in a regulatory and quality compliant way. We help, uh, the alliance managers help set up the projects, help uh, work with documentation, but internally and externally, and then provide a kickoff meeting so that prior to kickoff of your campaign or your batch, we are all aligned and all ready to, to execute the project. Um, during the project execution, the alliance managers stay in touch with you. They ensure that you are involved in every step of the way, understand what's going on. Um, and we work very closely to work through any issues or any problems that may arise as well. And then of course, post project execution, after we've delivered your batch, uh, we continue to support you with your regulatory filings with any questions that you may have, or of course, setting up for uh, a, a new campaign. So overall, I just uh, you know want to just bring it back home and say you know, we are the CRISPR experts. I truly do believe that having been at Synthago and, and seeing what we've been able to build with our GMP guide business, but really all the platforms within Synthago, we really work to ensure that you get uh, your everything that you need in a timely manner. We work within your timelines um, and we have moved heaven and earth for our customers in order to make sure that they meet their timelines. We want to make sure that you're getting your therapeutics to the patients who need them as quickly as possible. We also work uh, to make sure that from, a, from a, our culture of quality and our commitment to quality, as well as from a regulatory compliance perspective, that we're providing you with drug substances that are uh, ready to be used, that can be, uh, um, the data can be used in an IND filing, and that we know that it's safe and effective for your therapeutic. And overall, we just want to make sure that what we're providing to you is, Im is improving human health. It's delivering the cutting edge technology that is required in order for us to move forward with this innovative therapeutics. And that's it for me. Thank you for your time today. Thank you so much. Uh, both Bob and Becky, this was really a very great talk. Uh, we have a lot of questions coming in. Um, some of these have been answered on chat, but I do want to bring up a few that uh, maybe we could get more into detail about. So I think um, a good one is about our analytical tests. The question is, do your analytical tests look different between GMP light and uh, fully GMP materials? No. <laughs> to answer the question simply, no. Our analytical tests, again, our GMP, like under GLPs, um, is really meant to, to give us information so that we can feed that directly into the GMP production. And so our GMP, like under GLPs, um, really mimics, including the, the production, uh, the type of equipment, even the operators um, are all the same between the two. 
Um, and so we, we uh, so are the analytical methods as well. So that the release testing we're doing for your GMP like under GLPs will provide us information that will inform the GMP runs. Great. Um, one more question was about how are you doing sequence confirmation of the GRNA? Uh, I don't know if I can disclose that at the moment. No, I, don't, I don't think we can. It's an evolving space. Yeah. FDA not yet having set standards and accepted as, as a, a common uh, yeah. experimental platform to do the analyses. So we are successfully demonstrating our guide sequence, but this is during the pre-IND or IND privilege dialogue. Yes, thank you, Bob. Exactly. We're happy to talk to you about that as a part of a you know in client initiation discussions, um, but can't disclose that here. And you can imagine it's complicated by and not as simple as just doing a reverse transcribed sequence uh, determination. We modify and in some cases ultra modify our uh, guides or our attaching moieties that may make them sensitive to light or have other preferred properties. And it, it complicates that. All right. Uh, there is also a question uh, about the purity of um, SGRNA. Is that something uh, that we can comment on? Uh, Becky, Bob, anyone? Is there a specific question about there is, purity? There is a, uh, we measure I purity? Out, <laughs> yes, I can read out the whole uh, question. There's actually multiple questions in there. Um, what, what is the purity of your sgRNA? What's difference in production you've done to get high quality products? Um, yeah, and there's... Uh, um, it, they also say the highest quality of SGRNA is now about 95%, now above 95% purity. So um, anything you want to comment on that? So I can say that um, feedback that we've received from agency as well as from our customers is uh, around 80% purity is what um, the agency is looking for, as well as what our customers are looking for. Uh, I can confidently say that that is within the range of what we can provide. Um, we, uh, purity is a, is a, the difference, if we want to talk about the difference in the purity between GMP-like under GLPs and GMP, um, uh, the GMP is higher purity material. It goes through additional purification and filtration steps um, versus the GMP-like under GLPs. Um, but we, again, we, take the regulatory intelligence that we are receiving from the agency directly, as well as from our customers, and really try to put that back into our production to ensure that we are staying proactive uh, and, may, and, and ahead of the curve in terms of the requirements that the FDA are developing as they're getting more and more data from, uh, from sponsors. Yeah, I think, Becky, you're also pointing to relationships we've had in solving problems with clients. And I think in terms of quality programs, the best circumstances we've had are when we co-develop with the partner early on. And so I think it's been very fruitful to us to understand our assays versus their expectations and have that kind of combined dialogue. So I think one thing that's also come out of that are clients that are increasingly interested in correlating off-target activity with uh, guide purity. And so there's going to be some debate about that, but we're finding that that's really the orthogonal study that matches up with purity. And mm -hmm. the end game is having a clean product in terms of on-off target editing efficiency at the end of the day. So I think that's rising to Trump as much to be balanced with the, uh, with the ultra high purification. And we yeah. are looking at new ways to purify. Obviously, I can't tell you what those are currently, but everybody understands this game is going to move to ultra high purity materials and need to look at new ways to purify. Again, that's where we would like to do that in a co-development process with people. So we get into the real specific requirements, nucleases and guides vary. I mean, it, it's really a bespoke game at that point. Sorry to talk so much. No, no, that's absolutely right. I think uh, you brought up a really good point, Bob. 
that one, um, again, we partner with our customers. So, uh, you know, we, we don't have a, a general, um, this is what we do every single time. Every campaign is highly customized to what our customer needs are. And that includes even developing analytical methods that are specific uh, or, or purity methods or, or anything like that that are specific for our clients. We have done that as well. The other thing is, I think, it's, and you know, we're trying to think of the bigger picture here instead of just focusing in on purity. What we want to focus in on is not only being being able to provide you with a highly pure product, but also understanding and characterizing what impurities are, and understanding what those impurity, the effect those impurities may have on either the safety or the efficacy of your therapeutic. Um, and so, those are the things that we're focused on right now, trying to think ahead of what the FDA or the agency is is thinking, and really trying to make sure that we. Uh, proactively work on those standards internally as part of our continuous improvement and commitment to quality. Okay. Great. Um, this has been answered, but I would still, uh, I think this is still worth addressing. Um, I know a lot of people are joining from outside the US. Uh, so there was a question about what about supporting developers outside the US? Do you work with foreign companies? And maybe we can comment more on that. Um, just one more follow up to that was also about the regulatory uh, issues that come with working with foreign companies if there are, you know, depending on the company, if there are different regulatory guidelines. So maybe we could address both of if and how we work with these. Sure. Yeah, so uh, we our global company, um, all our comp even uh, uh, the the customers that we work with that may be located in the U.S. A lot of them are also global companies, so we're not just focused in on FDA and FDA requirements. Um, the good news is that uh, specifically between FDA and EU, there are a lot of similarities in terms of the requirements for um, either the early early meetings. Um, engagements with the agencies uh, or, or regulatory authorities, as well as um, between the submissions themselves, right? So the between an investigational new drug submission and an investigational medicinal product, um, there's there's very, very many similarities. So we do work with companies, um, currently have customers that are in the EU, uh, have customers that are in um, Asian countries, as well as the US. Um, we, our, our regulatory team is devoted to making sure that we understand and continue to have the intelligence, the regulatory intelligence, uh, not only within the U.S. regulations, but also how do we make sure that our, our quality system as well as our operations are incorporating um, European pharma, pharmacopoeia requirements as well, right? So um, again, it's it's working with our customers and understanding what their individual needs and requirements are, and then making sure that we can meet those expectations uh, at the end with the with the deliverables. Bob, I don't know if you have anything else to add. No, that was good. <laughs> Thanks. Sure. Um, there was a question about, do you have plans to file a DMF to describe the guide synthesis process? Yeah, that's a great question. And that's a question that we get a lot. <laughs> um, so for, for those who don't know, a DMF is a drug master file. Um, it's basically a uh, submission to the FDA uh, that would uh, house all of our information about our manufacturing facilities and manufacturing process. Um, basically, sort of the same information that would go into a CMC module and an IND, um, but that lives with the FDA and then our customers can reference that um, as they're doing their INDs so they don't have to submit uh, the individual uh, module three for the guide RNA. Um, it is something that we that is actively under discussion. Uh, right now, um, we are so customized for our, our campaigns are so customized for our customers that it's hard to have just a general um, or or um, uh, yeah, a general, manufacturing process that we can reference. Um, so we're trying to determine the best way to do that, as well as logistically and operationally, you know, building that function within Synthago. Uh, it's something that potentially we're looking at um, for next year, uh, but I, I don't think we're going to have it any any sooner than that, which is why we really partner with our customers um, to, to create those CMC documents or summaries or, uh, you know, what, what you need in order to be able to provide the FDA required information 
for the guide RNA into your submissions. Um, and that's a that's a highly collaborative process. Uh, and I think by the time this time next year, we 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 may be in a position where we could have a DMF or at least on our way to that uh, with the FDA. Right. There, there's um, one about what is the largest sgRNA guide we have made till date. Um, uh, in terms of uh, what's the longest? Uh, that's that's probably what put in. Uh, I think 122 MERS is the longest we've made. Okay. Yeah, we have um, a we have a good bookend around short guides, shorter mm -hmm. than. CRISPR up through about 130 nucleotides. Yeah. So we do bespoke work with nuclease companies or people that have come in with a specialty nuclease to develop clinically. And in that case, is, you know, we do more like we do more bespoke client-specific syntheses. Becky, there's uh there was a recent question about uh, for GMP, can the QC testing be customized? I think you had some stuff on your slide, but maybe you can elaborate more on how yes. exactly we do that. Yes, absolutely. So we have our, our standard um, our, our standard release testing, which is you know pH, appearance, concentration, purity, identity. Um, but then after that, really, we can um, customize the release testing based on, of course, the requirements of our customers, as well as the feedback we're getting from uh, agency, the FDA, as well as regulatory authorities on what they would like to see tested either as release testing or specifically within stability testing as well. And so um, we can customize that uh, to include as many, uh, you know, all of the things that we listed, including, uh, you know, the residual solvents and water elemental impurities, uh, CCIT, all of those things, um, or just the bare minimum uh, to make sure that you have what you need to to move forward. So that's something that uh, in in um, collaboration with your alliance manager, as you're uh, doing that initial uh, client intake and talking about what the requirements are and um, completing our, our business pro uh, process specification form, which will list all of the required tests um, that will actually provide uh, input as well as to what we think would be appropriate versus uh, what what is optional versus needed. Great. Um, there have been a lot of questions about impurities in the context of SGRNA and um, yeah, Abby has answered them in the chat, but uh, I'm just looking through the last one because there are... Yeah, there's the last one in chat about manufacturing uh, Cas9 GMP and integrating mm -hmm. to make an RMP. And yes, that is something that uh, that that is something in our wheelhouse. We do that. I think we're not currently supplying mRNA for Cas9. I think was the second half of that uh, question. But happy to talk more uh, if you're interested. Drive to the RMP approach. Yeah, and in our new um, our new facility that is going online this year, we'll have we have a dedicated RMP lab. Um, that is going to, so that um, not only the complexing, but as well as innovating within that space is directly associated with the GMP operations. So it, it can feed back and forth very, very easily. Okay. Um, yeah, I think there have been many questions that have already been answered as well. Um, can, can I ask for clarification around a couple that I was not able to answer in the chat? Absolutely, yeah. Abby, please go ahead with so, the yeah, ones that so, are pending. Sorry, there was one, and if, if I was typing, so if I missed the answer to this, and it's already been addressed, I apologize. I can't listen and type at the same time. Um, is the EU in step with the FDA for development of regulations and agency thinking is one of the questions that came through that I didn't get to. Uh, yes, and you can see that by, and you can speak specifically to the editing thing, Becky, but certainly Bluebird Bio has seen their medicines uh, equivalently reviewed by both agencies, timely, same standards. So I don't see a disconnect, an intentional disconnect at all. No, and actually, um, you know, this is 
kind of what we see just in general. Um, there's, you know, especially with the International Conference on Harmonization and those kinds of things, making sure that um, the the burden of the regulatory burden is um, not so different between countries where you're trying, especially something as innovative as these therapeutics. Um, and as I mentioned within our regulatory team, that is something that we consistently try to ensure is that we're looking at, um, you know, Asia, Europe, and the U.S. to make, to ensure that the regulatory guidance that we're providing, as well as the intelligence that we're gathering, um, can be translated into our production to support uh, international support for, for these therapeutics. Thank you. Um, I think that might be the only one that I didn't yeah. get to, except for the one I'm in the middle of typing an answer to. Okay. So we certainly um, thank everybody for, for uh, listening in. Yes. Thank you so much. We appreciate your time and attention today. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. We have, uh, I've posted a link in the chat as well, where you can just book meetings and find out more. Um, all of us are available for answering uh, your questions. And uh, we will also post in a link for post-event survey. So please fill that out so we can make better webinars and, and more webinars for you. So link coming up right away. And Bob and Becky, <clears throat> I want to thank you for, for taking the time today um, and answering uh, all of these questions. And yeah, just uh, thank you everyone for joining. Here's the link that's been sent for the uh, event survey. We'll just give a few seconds for people to copy over that link and thank you everyone. Thank you everyone. We'll Bye. close out the session in a minute. Bye.